Okay. We're live. Here we go, here we go, everybody. They're coming. They're going in. There's some hippo opposite them. We're just trying to organize the camera a little bit. You want to reverse slightly? Yeah, Can we just, just reverse slightly like that? We're just helping Robert, who's driving us today. Just slightly. Other way? Other way? Uh, Robert, other way. No, no, no. Backwards and to the right. No, no. No, right hand down. There we go. Sorry, everybody. Here we go. There we go. That's fine. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> my Swahili, not quite as good as my Shandan, everyone. Tanya, you say... You say it's about time. Yes, it is about time, isn't it? But the you new know, the new battery says 98%, and that is the chances of crossing, according to Graham and Peter and their statistical model. And well, here we go. We could all decide just to turn straight back up the bank there. was uh, certainly closer than they've got before. Yes. Hello Hayley. You're wondering if they can break their legs when they um, cross. It can happen. Not normally at a bank like this. This is not a particularly steep bank. Here comes a whole another lot trying to, well, thinking about coming down. Hayley, we were Further south on the river during much of the afternoon. Here we go. And there there are very steep banks and they can break their legs when they do that. They can break various parts of their bodies. And with their legs obviously the ones that go the most. But these banks are not that steep. It's probably about a six foot drop. No, not even that. Probably about a five foot vertical drop in some places here. Otherwise it's just very steep. You can just see a guinea fowl there, bottom right, bottom left of screen. They've managed to do it. They're going to cross. I think here come the, the guinea fowl, everybody. The guinea fowl are crossing, and they've inspired the wildebeest. <laughs> Look at that. Sparky, I think you want to know what makes the wildebeest cross the river. Sparky, at this stage, apparently nothing. But oh, here we go. Sparky, what it is... Here we go, we've got a mass movement now. Sparky, it's a democracy. Eventually, the urge to cross becomes overwhelming in enough of them, and they will plunge into the water. They might just want to drink, you know, they would not necessarily kind of come across. Oh, this is very exciting, and look at the light. The light's beautiful, it's just popping out now. Michelle, you want to know if they would want to avoid hippos? Yes, they could, might. They wouldn't want to walk straight into them. But hippos are unlikely to harm them. It does happen from time to time, but it's not likely to be a major deterrent. That, that, that thing is so close to jumping into the water. And I'm going to have to try not to scream and weep for joy when it does happen, because there are people all around us, all enjoying this unbelievable scene. But I might whoop for joy anyway. May I whoop? Permission to whoop, Captain? You may whoop at will. I will whoop at will. I'm clear to whoop. <laughs> and sorry, I missed your, missed your question. I was talking nonsense. Ah, you want to know if this is males and females crossing? Absolutely. This is a herd of males and females. It's a breeding herd. 
males and females and youngsters. There are a few yearlings here. There are a few that will be in their first migration. This will be the first time up here in the Mara. And you were asking about the hippo. As they move off to the left here, there is a hippo kind of turning to face them. I don't think he'll sort of mean them any harm. And you know that a hippo becomes tremendously threatened. Oh. Some of them chipping out. You can just hear them going bow, 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 bow in the background. And look at the light. Isn't it beautiful? And AJ, you say that you had no idea that they agonized so much before taking the jump. AJ, I've got to tell you, I didn't realize they agonized quite so much either. And I think what we were discussing here is that this is not a very big herd, and that perhaps a much larger herd would have had sufficient kind of quorum, if you like, to inspire them to come across already. But perhaps the pressure is just not quite sufficient in this little herd, and so they're sort of thinking about it and then deciding, nah, nah, don't fancy a swim. But there are a lot of people sitting all around us on tinter hooks, waiting. Fascinating stuff, this it really is. Absolutely incredible to see for the first time. how far across the river is. you say it looks just like a, a sort of run it's it's quite far you know it's probably about mm, I'd say 200 meters or so maybe not quite 150 meters across so that's about 500 feet so I mean in, in, in places it's probably 200 meters and it's just over 600 feet And this is what everyone comes here to see. This time of year, they come here to see these herds brave the waters. Slightly macabre, I suppose, even that I guess everyone's wondering whether they won't be set upon by those great behemoth reptiles, those ancient creatures of the waters of Africa that have rendered so many of our water courses almost completely unusable because they lurk in the lurk in the depths and they of course are one of the very few animals that see humans as fair game and they're very happy to try and eat us not wildebeest I mean crocodiles wildebeest don't eat people much do they Graham? I've got 